Hello friends, I am Devish Kumar Jain. Today I am here to reveal you the concepts of the liposomes. And my flow of content would be firstly introduction, then history behind the liposomes, after the structure of the liposomes, then their advantages followed by their disadvantages, then classification of the liposomes after that components of them, then the most important concepts of the liposome formation, and finally the differences. The abbreviation used in the presentation are displayed in the slide. So coming to the introduction, what are liposomes? So liposomes are the spherical vesicles having an aqueous core and they are also dispersed in the water. They are having phospholipid bilayer to which we call lamellae. Structurally liposomes are concentric bilayer vesicles means they are made up of multiple bilayer vesicles having a single center. The word liposomes is derived from the Greek word the lipo means the fatty constituent and the word soma means the structure. The membrane of the liposomes are made up of two main components first one is phospholipid and second one is cholesterol. So the history behind liposomes says that a scientist Bingham was working in 1960s he was experimenting on diffusion and permeability so then what he did is published in his article the reference of that article displayed in the slide so what he did actually he have taken phospholipids in water in a flask then allowed that flask to shake on a water shaker butter bath for a very longer period of time like one week or seven days then when he applied temperature above glass transition temperature he observed the vesicular structures after sometimes named the liposomes so this is the structure of the liposomes as it shows a bilayer <coughs> on the surface or outward which is called as phospholipid bilayer and an aqueous core inside these are the surface functionalized liposomes their structures this is antibody functionalized liposomes and this is the liposomes functionalized with PG and active targeting ligand so why we are studying the liposomes today what are the advantages of the liposomes as a drug delivery system as a drug carrier system so the main advantage of the liposome that it can carry both hydrophilic and hydrophobic drug along with it. It can also increase the stability of the encapsulated agent or encapsulated drug. As it encapsulates the drug inside, it can also reduce the toxicity of the same agent. Also have the site avoidance effect. Is can also improve the pharmacokinetic effect like reduce the elimination and increase the circulation lifetimes and flexibility to couple with site specific ligands means we can functionalize the liposomes with many site specific ligand to achieve active targeting as it have number of advantages it may also have some disadvantages also which is the main disadvantage is its long term unstability means liposomes are not stable for a very long period of time second more important thing as a disadvantage is they are sensitive toward the temperature they may also get oxidized as lipid is present in them the third main problem is the drug leakage means liposomes release the drug slowly slowly even though when they are on the shelf they also have a low drug loading of equus drug and high production cost that's why difficult for marketing now coming to the classification of the liposomes so on the first basis liposomes are classified on the type of their lamellarity or the number of their lamellas on this basis liposomes are generally classified in four different categories first one is multi lamellar recycles second, second one is oligo lamellar recycles third one is ulv or unilamellar recycles and in the last multi vesicular recycles 
the unilamellar vesicles can further classified into three different types first one is small unilamellar vesicles second one is large unilamellar vesicles and third one is the giant unilamellar vesicles the size of these all different types of the liposomes are displayed on the slide they are all lesser than 500 nanometer now coming to set second basis of the classification on the basis of their calculation so first one is conventional liposomes these are the neutral or negatively charged vesicles or very simple having only two constituent first one is phospholipid and second one is cholesterol second types of the liposome are fusogenic liposomes they are functionalized with sendai virus or made up of sendai virus envelope so have a very high fusogenic behavior third one is ph sensitive liposomes if liposomes are formed with the help of dop and allylamine they shows the ph sensitive behavior means they release the drug at a specific ph site fourth and most important while used properties their long circuit circulatory or the stealth nature if the liposomes functionalize with with 5% or 10% peg they show stealth behavior or they can be hide from macrophages that's why they called stealth liposomes and the last one they are named as immunoliposomes as they functionalize with the monocular antibody they show active targeting for a specific site now coming to the components of the liposomes liposomes are mainly made of phospholipid and the cholesterol as the two major constituents so now studying the phospholipids in detail it is the major component of the liposomes which form a bilayer they are available in the nature in the three different types first one is phospholipid second one is phosphatidyl ethanolamine and third one is phosphatidyl serine this is the structure of a common phospholipid molecule having a polar head group like choline group in case of phosphatidyl choline then a phosphate backbone then glycerol linkage this all three contribute to the hydrophilic head group of phospholipid molecule after that it have two acyl fatty chains which contribute to the hydrophobic tail of the phospholipid molecule this is the structure of whole phospholipid molecule having some of its portion as a hydrophilic head and rest of its portion as a hydrophobic tail the example of the phospholipids are displayed on the slide they are phospholipid ethanolamine and the serine as a natural occurring phospholipids then DOPC, DSPC, DOP and DSP they are synthetic phospholipids modified for various purposes suppose example PS sensitive liposomes now coming to the second component which is cholesterol as cholesterol do not able to form bilayer alone but it act as a fluidity buffer it also provide rigidity to the bilayer due to the cholesterol the bilayer become more stable toward the temperature means below tg the membrane become less ordered and more permeable and above tg it make the bilayer more ordered and stable cholesterol can be incorporated generally in one ratio one or one ratio two molar ratio comparative to phospholipids now coming to the concepts of liposome formation the liposomes are formed by phospholipid molecules so phospholipid molecule as I told you have a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail means two portions so when they come in the contact with the water the hydrophobic portion feels repulsion so to reduce those repulsion they orient themselves in a different sort of manner as all hydrophilic group orient facing toward outward and inward and all hydrophobic part facing toward the middle and forming the bilayer or the lamellae by this way they form the bilayer of the liposomes which is their specific characteristic property 
so this is the structure of the phospholipid molecule as i told you having a polar head group and hydrophobic tail group so this may form a micelle also this may form a bilayer sheet also and may form a liposome also so in which case is to form a micelle uh, that we'll discuss later so when it form a micelle it is not able to reduce the repulsion completely so the formation of the micelle is not possible so to reduce the repulsion of the water from the both side it form a bilayer sheet but as the bilayer sheet is not stable for a very long time and this portion of the bilayer exposed to the water molecules and also feels repulsion causing instability so bilayer sheet is also not possible so then as a third option and best option the phospholipid molecules orient them self as a liposomes vesicles which is the most correct orientation so this is the reason why soaps or detergent or the micelles cannot form a liposome as the micelle or the soap detergents having a single acyl chain the molecule form a conical shape so they are able to form only the micellar structure or the hexagonal type one if the molecule having two acyl chains they may form a cylindrical structure so they can form in the many multiples a lamellar or the cubic structure only but if the acyl side chains having very long chain then with the help of repulsion as in the case of cholesterol or phosphatidylethylamine they may form hexagonal type 2 now coming to the mechanism of the cholesterol by this why this act as a fluid diffuse buffer so we'll study this phenomena in two different steps first one is below transition temperature and contribution of the cholesterol above transition temperature so below transition temperature when cholesterol is incorporated in the lesser concentration it separates the choline head groups of the phospholipid molecules and eliminate the electrostatic or hydrogen bonding interactions hence the make membrane less ordered and in this way they stabilize the bilayer but when they are added in the higher concentration like suppose one ratio two ratio of phosphoryl molecules the area of the membrane occupied by the acyl side chains and the cholesterol molecules are greater or equal to that of choline head groups this also retards the chain tilt phenomena when happens in the transition temperature means it retards the chain tilt phenomena of acyl side chains and hence avoid the melting of uh, bilayer by this way they provide the rigidity to bilayer below transition temperature but above transition temperature acyl side chains become more and more active but chain tilt phenomena happens and this decrease the freedom of the acyl side chains hence membrane remains more rigid and condensed with decreased fluidity this is the mechanism of, of the cholesterol why it act as a fluidity buffer by this way cholesterol provide rigidity to the bilayer and make the bilayer more stable below and above the glass transition temperature these are the references used in the preparing of the presentation thank you